If you want some FIFA 23 coins, please check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're fast, cheap, and reliable. And if you use code REMA, you can get yourself a 5% discount. So what's going on, guys? My name's Ash, and welcome back to a brand new video. If you're looking to get more wins in foot champions so you can get the best rewards to inevitably not pack a team of the year, then you've come to the right place because we've got some 4-2-3-1 custom tactics and player instructions, which will carry you this weekend in foot champions. But just before we get into today's video i'd very much appreciate it if you could drop this video a thumbs up as it does really help with the youtube search algorithm also subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted and hopefully i can get through this video without getting disconnected but uh we'll see because the servers are mudded but yeah let's get right into today's video so starting off with the custom tactics guys, for the defensive start I like to use balance, I always use this with my formations because you might have guessed it gives you the most balance when you are defending. So having it on balance allows you to press when you need to and be more conservative and drop off a bit when you also need to. So it does give you greater control of your defence. A lot of people like to use press after possession loss or pressure on heavy touch. Uh, you can use this if you like but I do suggest getting used to balance if you can because the 4-2-3-1 above all other formations is the most balanced of the lot. Now, moving on to the defensive whip, I used to have this a little bit lower, but I've actually upped this because people have been going for those cheesy cutbacks and dodgy goals even more than usual recently. You know, they just run down the wing, they cut in slightly, they do that assisted driven pass, and then it's a tap in. You know, we don't really want that, so we upped that a little bit to 42. Just gives me a bit more greater coverage of the wings, and it does help uh, with defending, with it still being primarily narrow. Now, moving on to the depth, I've actually upped this to 62 because I was noticing when I had this on like 50. 58. It was still being a little bit too defensive. I didn't really like it. I was getting pinned back a bit too much. So I just up the depth slightly so I can win the ball slightly higher up the pitch and we keep that higher line just so we can really win the ball back in those better uh, areas so we can start the quick attacks. And this goes very well with the offensive tactics, which we'll get onto right about now. So for build up play, this goes very hand in hand with the depth as I was just talking about. So I have this on fast build up because the idea is that we win the ball slightly higher up the pitch. And then we can catch our opponent out. So the fast build-up means our players will move a lot quicker to create passing options. So we can really utilize those quick counter-attacks when we need to. It's also nice to get quicker movement out of your players because sometimes you can be a bit short of passing options. So it does really help. I like it in the 4-2-3-1 as well because you have like five midfielders essentially with the three cams, two CDMs. So it is actually very easy to pass the ball between players. I don't usually suggest this in like the flatter formations, but with the 4-2-3-1, I think it works very nicely. Now, moving on to chance creation, guys, I always suggest direct passing. The reason being is it is the only setting which will allow you to break through the defensive line effectively. If you look at the diagram in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can see the white dots, which are your attacking players. They're constantly moving around to break through the defensive line and to help you create chances. If we look at something like balance, this really doesn't happen. You can see they're very static. They don't bother that defensive line at all you can see they all keep their positions you know you're not really bothering them so I do very much suggest direct passing as it is the easiest for creating chances now moving on to attacking width because this is a narrow formation it makes sense that we want to attack in a more narrow style this th width of 38 also goes very well with fast build-up and the reason being is because we have a more narrow width with fast build-up it means our team is closer together so we can play those short passes very quickly and we can start very fast attacks if we had our width quite high our players would be more disconnected from each other which means making those quicker passes and building up the play quickly can be very difficult because they're further away uh, so having a nice narrow width with fast build up actually works very nicely in this formation now moving on to players in box i have this on five the reason for this is i like to get some players into the box you know to create chances of course but at the same time i don't want to overcommit my whole team so by having this on five we do get to create some chances but at the same time if we lose the ball we're not going to get counter-attacked as easily and for corners and free kicks these are down to preference but I just have these on two because it's similar to players in box I like to have some players there for the set piece but at the same time I don't want to overcommit my whole team and I don't want to concede a counter-attack because they're the most annoying goals but if you want to up this or lower it it's completely up to you now moving on to the players you want to use guys in the striker position because this is a one striker formation you need to use somebody that can compensate 
compensate for the fact that there is only one striker in this formation. With a two striker formation, you can go for a balance between the two strikers. You know, you could have a lengthy and then an explosive player next to them. But with a 4-2-3-1, you kind of have to con combine all that into one player. So I suggest going for a nice, well-rounded striker, someone that can do a bit of everything. I'm using Robbie Keane because he's got the five-star weak foot, so he can shoot on either foot. He's got very good shooting stats, good dribbling, good pace, even good physical. You know, somebody that can do a bit of everything is very important in the one striker formations. Now, moving on to the wide cams, I suggest using winger style players, somebody that is technical, somebody that could even skill, so like Dima is perfect, somebody that can cross, shoot, you know, basically do everything that a winger can do because like these wide cams are mainly like wingers in these formations. But at the same time, you don't want to just go for somebody with that is all pace and no final product. So just go for a nice technical player in these positions, uh, somebody that is really going to help you out there. Now in the cam, it's important that you go for like a natural cam, somebody that has the right movements. People with high, high work rates seem to be the best at cam. So someone like Phil Foden, someone that is agile, somebody that has the stats for a cam, you know, even like Bernardo Silva's perfect in this position. You don't want to go for like a striker in the cam position because you're wasting uh, a position there. Your cam's meant to be one of the most creative players. So it's important that you go for somebody that is good at playing in this position. It takes a long time to find somebody that you like in the cam position. But when you find that player that works, trust me, you will know that it works. Now, moving on to the two CDMs, I like to go for a bit of a balance between these two players. I go for one more defensive one in Patrick Vieira. This is somebody with very good defensive stats, somebody that is going to stay back and make life difficult for my opponent. It's important that you have this balance. Uh, and then on the right CDM spot, I have a more box-to-box -box player, somebody with very well-rounded stats, somebody that is able to get up and down the pitch and really contribute at both ends. The most perfect work rate for this position is a high, high work rate because it gets the maximum contribution when you are attacking and the maximum contribution when you are defending. The left CDM, the perfect one is like a medium high, but a medium medium or a high high is also fine. Now moving on to the fullbacks, I like to go for a balance between these two players. I go for one more attacking fullback in Hernandez, somebody that's going to actually help in the attack. And then I go for one more defensive player in Kyle Walker to really shore up the defense and uh, stop us conceding as many goals. But if you want to go for two attacking players or even two defensive players, completely up to you. Do what you like. Now in the center backs and goalkeeper position, you basically just want these to be as good as possible. And I'm really just using Chesney in goal for chemistry, although he is actually quite good in this game. Now for player instructions guys, I'm currently using on the striker, stay central and come back on defense. The reason for this is we want him to stay in those central areas because we've already got wide players. We don't need him to go to those areas. We need him to stay central. We need him to be there to finish the chances. I'm using mixed attack instead of getting behind because I noticed getting behind made him very one dimensional and all you could really do is like through ball it. So by having him on mixed attack, it allows him to bring out his other abilities, you know, his passing, his movement, stuff like that. It works very well well actually uh, especially with fast build up and then we actually have come back on defense the reason for this is not so he defends it's so he doesn't go too far away from the rest of the team because sometimes on basic defensive support the striker will be all the way at the halfway line and then the rest of the team will be like back way in your half so he's very disconnected if you have him on basic defensive support so by having him on come back on defense it really does connect him with the rest of the team and it works very well with the fast build up setting now moving on to the cam I actually just have stay forward on the central cam the reason for this is Phil Foden is a high high player so if we leave him on basic defensive support sometimes the high defensive work rate will pull him back too far and I don't really like that so I actually have stay forward to combat the high defensive work rate so he sits in a more natural position and it does work very well that is the reason we have stay forward on the central cam now for both wide cams we just have get into the box for cross the reason for this is we don't want to restrict them too much but what you will notice is if you have these players on balance crossing runs sometimes they don't get involved enough so it's important that you have them on get into the box for cross so they are making those transitional runs to really get involved in the attacks because you don't want these players just sitting on the edge of the box not really getting involved because you can find it very difficult to create chances so it doesn't always mean you have to cross the ball it just means they will make those runs into the box to really get involved so get into the box for cross on both the left cam and the right cam.
Now moving on to the right CDM, the more box to box CDM, we leave him on completely balanced settings and the only thing we change is cover center. So we want him on cover center because we need him to cover those central areas. We don't need anyone else to cover the wings because on this side we've already got Chiesa and Walker. We don't need another player there. We need him to cover those central areas to stop the passes through the middle. And then we leave everything else on balance because like I said it's a box to box play. You don't want to restrict them too much because they're going to attack and they're going to defend. So this is why the high high work rate works very very well with these instructions now moving on to the more defensive CDM we have stay back while attacking cut passing lanes and cover center these are just the most defensive settings you can put on and it's just so they stay back they don't get involved in the attack because you don't need them to they cover the central areas because similarly to Park Ji Sung we don't need him to cover the wings because we've already got Di Maria and Hernandez there so we want him to cover the central areas and then we just have cut passing lanes because it really does help to break up the play and even kickstart fast attacks now moving on to the fullbacks like I said I have a balance between them I have one attacking fullback and one more defensive fullback so on my more attacking fullback I have balanced attack and overlap the reason for this is the 4-2-3-1 is obviously a narrow formation so sometimes we do need extra whip so by having him on balanced attack and overlap it means he's always going to overlap Di Maria or the wide player so we can get that extra whip so it does work very well and I really enjoy having one attacking fullback in this formation now for the more defensive player I have stayed back while attacking and overlap because this is a more defensive player we want him to stay back we want him to help us defend so we've always always at least got three defenders back as well as Patrick Vieira and then we also have him on overlap because if he does go forward if we do trigger a run forward with him we want him to overlap instead of underlap so we get even more width out of the formation and yeah that is why we use that but if you have like two defensive players you could just put stay back on both or if you have two attacking players you could put balance attack on both it's completely up to you but yeah that is everything for the video guys if you have enjoyed or found this useful i'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted and with all that aside guys I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll catch you all later peace